they are hand woven. They're made um, by an individual. And they capture something in history because they're made for a certain event. He was also a very, very generous person and he, he always was giving back to his community. They enjoyed the coverlets in their home and loaned them out to various places. I think it was a great choice and uh, we're, we're very pleased to be here. Well, coverlets are basically a, a woven bed covering. They, the history of, they think that they can document the history of coverlets going back to Germany about 1760s, where they first started to develop. And then obviously some of that tradition was brought to the United States by the German immigrants coming into this country. They are a piece of social history. Therefore, you can look at the coverlet and decipher what was going on at the time, what people thought about different things, and what was important. In many ways, I think it, it, it's an important part of, of the, the history of our country, and it reflects, again, that, that spirit that was, was so alive and generated in the immigrants that, uh, that came to this, to this country. These uh, beautiful coverlets are handcrafted. Uh, no machines were used, to the best of my knowledge, to, on any of them. And they were all handwoven between 1810 and 1870. They are handwoven. They're made um, by an individual, each one individually, not mass produced. And I think, of course, they're great symbols of hospitality. What, what better than a warm blanket for, uh, to symbolize hospitality? Well, there's a sense of friendship there through the coverlets and how they were gifted to other people and how they were used in people's homes. But there, there's also conflict involved. I mean, everything we have in our collection, it ends up into the point of the Civil War. And so you can see the conflict between the North and the South because the cotton trade was not coming up North, so Northern weavers couldn't produce their goods. They capture something in history because they're made for a certain event. And you can see in the corners some of the dates and the people and the events. So the coverlets really act as something, as a memento, something as, as a photograph. They capture uh, that event in time. Coverlet weavers were generally men. Sometimes they were immigrants or people who learned from immigrants, generally sometimes from Germany, obviously the very large weaving tradition. Most of the time, these were people who were professional weavers. This weaving was their occupation, at least for part of their part of the year. Some farmers were actually weavers, uh, maybe wove maybe during the winter when they weren't actually out farming. Uh, and they ranged in, most of the weavers came from the mid-Atlantic states. And weavers, weaving was quite often, not always, a tradition that was sometimes handed down from father to son or father to nephew, kept in the family. Mr. Foster McCarl was a businessman for a lot of years, very active in his community. Uh, his business was in uh, plumbing and heating primarily. And uh, he was also a very, very generous person and he, he always was giving back to his community. Foster was always interested in having them located uh, somewhere in southwestern Pennsylvania. He had looked at his hometown of Beaver Falls and when it didn't look like there were any opportunities there, his friend, Father Lamp, uh, suggested that he call St. Vincent and uh, that began a discussion that extended over several years. They wanted the coverlets to be uh, closer to home because the possibility was Williamsburg as well but uh, they thought closer to home would be better, that is Western Pennsylvania, uh, because they are from the uh, Butler area, Beaver, Beaver area, excuse me. And, um, and so St. Vincent was, uh, was a good place, and we also had a mutual friend in Father Joe Lemp, who was a, a seminary graduate of St. Vincent and also a friend of the McCarl family, and so there was a personal connection there as well. We settled on this place, uh, and uh, I think it was a great choice and uh, we're, we're very pleased to be here. Foster and Mira McCarl were collectors for about 50 plus years and they enjoyed the coverlets in their home and loaned them out to various places but when they got a little older I think they st Foster at least started to think about what was going to happen to the coverlets when he passed away and so they decided one of the things that they were very interested in doing is to make them available to the public so that the public could enjoy them, but they also wanted to ensure that the coverlets were cared for and preserved. 
Uh, they also obviously looked at other places to give them a, a good home, but because of the strong um, appreciation for history that St. Vincent's has, both within the college and the Arch Abbey, and also the fact that the college also has uh, museum-oriented courses in the arts department, in the fine arts department, and both public, the history, public history programs here. Uh, the college uh, talked to the McCarl family, and they decided, uh, they had a mutual agreement that the college would provide an exhibition gallery and a, a proper coverlet storage facility for those coverlets, and then would also, ex and that would also ensure that they be cared for and preserved as well as exhibited. So it was a good match for. Uh, for both the McCarl family's needs and the college's needs. Foster McCarl, he, he saw them as being important uh, for, for education. You can uh, use the, co the, co the coverlets as uh, a material culture, which is just what they were. They were bed coverings, and you can look at them as bed coverings from the past. Uh, you can take a look at them uh, as uh, decorative arts so that students, we've had students use the gallery in the decorative arts in the drawing classes. You can take a look at them from the designs that are in them, uh, from the way they were made. But you can also take a look at the coverlets as historic documents. And what's one of the ways I like to look at the coverlets as historic documents. And they can actually be looked at, researched, studied for, from the people who made them, the, uh, the styles that were used in them, the patterns that are in the designs that are in them. So you can actually, we're trying to encourage use of the coverlets by um, different departments on campus. You can even extend that to the sciences because they're great examples of early dyeing techniques. So you can even get into chemistry. Every um, cover that we have here was made with natural dyes. We could use these in, in history classes, uh, in fine arts classes. Uh, Brother Mark Florini teaches in the, fi in the fine arts department. He does weaving. Uh, he works with fabrics. His students and other students uh, could go and visit, uh, explore, uh, see the finished project. Everything here tries to foster that appreciation and understanding of the past and how we can relate it to the present and move forward. This really represents the first uh, official coverlet museum. There are several other attempts to to bring together coverlet collections, but this is by far the largest and probably the most significant coverlet uh, collection and we're, we're happy that Foster uh, cho chose St. Vincent. My dad never got to see it. You know, he, uh, he passed away before uh, before we completed the project. Um, but I, I, I'd wish he'd got to see it. I really do because he put a lot of, a lot of time and effort into, into making a decision and, uh, and I just wish he would have had the chance to see it.